we took out all our savings and we just started. Talking about hydroponics, the future of farming, and the work that he's been doing for the last four years, building Triton Food Works in, in Delhi, India. Thank you very much for taking time to be with us. Um, do me a favor and just, you know, tell us a little bit about uh, who you are and how you got into yeah. you know farming the future yeah so I uh, after finishing my mechanical engineering I moved to Singapore for doing my master's in management uh, from NTU while exploring that uh, my friend and I were discussing an idea uh, about uh, soilless farming so I visited a few farms in the US I came back to Singapore I visited one uh, very good farm uh, in Singapore called uh, Comcrop okay so that is how we discovered the idea I came across the technique I saw that everything is working practically Neither you nor your co-founder had mm. any background in farming. None, none. You're like, okay, let's do this. We took out all our savings and we just started. We come from a farming background, so you didn't know anything. We didn't know anything, yeah. Okay. So we had a technical guy, uh, Mr. Deepak Kukreja is our technical uh, CTO. Okay. So he handles all the technical uh, stuff. He's quite well versed, like probably one of the very few people who have uh, India-specific hydroponic experience for more than 10 years now. So it took a lot of hard work. Where are you guys now? So we are growing. Uh, all this produce that we grow is uh, harvested in the morning, directly uh, goes to the restaurants. A lot of QSRs, uh, bigger ones in the Delhi and NCA region. Uh, freshly harvested at around 6, 7 a.m. goes, reaches them by 9, 30, 10 a.m. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we're selling all our produce directly to the uh, consumers. We are uh, very soon we are uh, coming up with our own uh, brand, which will be kept uh, at a lot of premium uh, uh, supermarket stores across Delhi and region okay. and then uh, we plan to replicate the similar model in the other metropolitan cities across India Mumbai Bangalore who is the ultimate consumer the ultimate consumer is uh, uh, upper middle class who are health conscious who are going to uh, gym uh, who are exercising who are uh, conscious about their health and their uh, they like to spend some money on also uh, buying healthy food now Tell me a little about how you've brought down the cost. Why did you start trying to tackle that first? So the sole reason that we wanted to bring down the cost was uh, that India is such a price sensitive market. People do not uh, uh, want to pay a higher price for the premium produce. So uh, it was very necessary for us to bring down our cost of uh, fixed cost and the running cost. Mm -hmm. What uh, that led us to do was we did not directly copy the system which are available in the US or Holland or we tried to uh, do some R&D from those systems and we build better, more effective and cheaper versions of the, those systems. What was the catalog? Initial cost of setting up for one acre which is 4,050 uh, square meters of uh, hydroponic setup, it's about 150,000 USD. Okay, so quite reasonable. Quite reasonable, yes. That can produce around 600 kgs of leafies per day. How much more efficient is your process? So if you if you uh, do this in a scale, right, if, if we are doing this kind of setup in 15-20 uh, acres of scale, then a cost of production is cheaper than what a normal soil farmer uh, grows at. Produce that we are growing is, uh, in terms of leafies, it's 15 times more as compared to the traditional farms. And in terms of uh, crops like tomatoes and cucumbers, it's 4-5 to five times more. While using 70-95% uh, to 95 less water. Okay. Yeah. And how big is the how big of a problem is water right now in India? It's quite big. It's the, the recently we, I read a report that the Delhi uh, uh, Delhi state is in a serious water crisis. In the years that we've been in, into operation uh, since 2000 uh, end of 2014, we've managed to save uh, more than 2.5 uh, billion liters of water, That's and incredible. grown and grown uh, around 1,900 tons of uh, fresh fruits and vegetables. And Okay, you've, you've saved all this water, you're far more efficient. Yeah. Is this gaining the interest of governments, global non-profits? Like, are you starting to see attention coming to you guys because you're measuring this? Yeah, we were recently uh, uh, invited by the UN Environment Program uh, at the conference in Estonia, then in Paris, and recently our team will be attending uh, UN Environment Assembly in Nairobi. Okay. So they really, uh, they really like our work and they really want us to present uh, what we're doing in India across uh, different uh, uh, leaders across the world so that we can show them what's happening in India and this can be replicated in other developing nations. How do you judge yourself or how do you look at the work that you've done against something that's like an aero farm? See, uh, I think the market they're catering is much different. The Western market is much more different than the Asian market. So we, we're 
we 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 have to focus on making everything that we are uh, uh, doing much cheaper. So we have to do it big and we have to do it cheap. And then how does it, how does that affect the way that you approach the technology that you use? Are you we we try to develop our own technology as much as possible. Farmers in many parts of this region in India often uneducated often have very little economic means. Yeah. Is this a future model for them? Is this something that they should be trained into the new farming, the new ag economy? It's not a rocket science. Hydroponics is not a rocket science. It's very simple. It's very easy to train people. All the people involved in our farms are uh, not from the agriculture background. Mm -hmm. So there's probably six months or one year of training that they require. Right. So the farmers who are in the agriculture space can easily adopt this technology. Only disadvantage with uh, this type of technology is the, it's capital intensive. And the farmers do not have that kind of capital. So maybe a support from the government and some change in the government policies might uh, boost them mm -hmm. and uh, support them to get into something similar. What is that your your organization needs to grow to the next stage? Marketing is the major challenge for us. We are uh, we are overproducing. We are uh, selling almost uh, seventy percent of what uh, we produce. So okay. more marketing efforts, getting more access to the market is definitely one way, uh, which one thing which is needed in our organization. Mm -hmm. uh, we're pushing for direct B2C also. That gives us the brand visibility, uh, brand equity, as well as much more higher realization as compared to what we get from the businesses. Okay. Second is scaling up. This is, that, is that easy right now or is that really challenging? Uh, looks like it's challenging because it's it's not a software business where you can you know it's not a software business where you can uh, attract the VCs easily by showing them on papers that this right now if you give them give me one million uh, US I will uh, increase my hundred customers to ten thousand customers and a VC wants quick returns so that part I think might be a little hard to crack. How much did your degree in entrepreneurship? actually help you in being an entrepreneur now that you've been out a few years it was actually quite a great help uh, to me yeah because uh, uh, it from my degree uh, was focused on uh, how you manage your own business how other other people failed got up again mm. so that really gave me the courage and uh, the patience to you know the we've been yeah. what are your top three failures that you've learned from the instance where we got a farm demolished mm. that was a very big setback we were you know we were 23 24 old kids we invested all our savings and they were just demolished just because we we refused a bribe what did you do to bring it back so i think the tactic is only that you you think about the future you think that you are actually making a difference and maybe this only a small uh, failure can't uh, stop you from mm -hmm. doing what you actually thought you would do what was the lesson of that failure we made sure that after the first farm was demolished we will never get into any other uh, legal uh, we will choose only an agriculture pure agriculture land grow only at an agriculture land mm. and never mess with the local authorities so challenge that you learned the most of that really helped improve your systems there's a lot of pest infestation mm. so you need to make sure that we've installed cameras in our system so we need to make sure that at any point uh, of stress in the systems you need to act immediately the plant cannot wait for you know the the plant diseases spread uh, at a very fast pace right yeah so you can't uh, you just have to act immediately so there's a uh, proper attention needed if there's any sign of stress uh, in that otherwise you can uh, maybe lose the whole crop cycle. Yeah. Have you ever lost the whole crop cycle? Yeah, yeah, a lot of times, yes. What happened? Uh, we is could it, not. Is it one thing, or is it always something different? It's always something different. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Different crops, different diseases. Okay. Different measures that you have to uh, take. So uh, we are now uh, using a lot of biocontrol measures, like uh, we have marigold plants all across the boundary of our uh, farm, so that the insects are actually attracted to the uh, yellow color. So they just stop at the entrance of the greenhouse and they don't enter inside. Um, and then from a marketing standpoint, you mentioned that's a, that's a challenge. You're yeah. Through. Um, what was the what was the the hardest lesson or the hardest meeting you had, and how have you learned to market yourself better? Yeah, the hardest uh, hardest meeting I had was uh, with a five star group where uh, we were uh, trying to sell them. We we got a product approved from uh, the chef. We were just down uh, negotiating, like, the chef was like, I really like your produce, I would love to buy from you, but I'm not the deciding factor. So I'll tell my procurement guy, mm -hmm. and the procurement, procurement industry works uh, in a different way, uh, everywhere. 
so I'm not sure if the procurement guy was like, expecting a bribe or what, but uh, like we gave them the best possible rates, like maybe even lesser than what was available in the market, and still like I'm sorry we can't buy it from you. Okay. Like, your prices are so high. What was the lesson you took away? You just get to know the nature of a procurement guy or uh, any other guy who's just the deciding factor and you mm. handle them accordingly. You you, sh you show them the experience, you bring them to the farm, give them a proper presentation about what is better in your produce, how can uh, they actually charge a higher price from their customers from what uh, they're giving to them. Right. Yeah. So uh, just be maybe making them realize that what they're paying for is worth it. There's a lot of entrepreneurs to be watching this or aspiring entrepreneurs. Yeah. Um, what are three lessons that you wish that you'd known or that you think other people should know before they make the jump in two? One really important factor is that you, a lot of people spend a lot of time just thinking to get into uh, entrepreneurship. They should skip the thinking part. They should j maybe just jump. You face the challenges and then you see the actual picture. If you want to continue or if you want to get back to your job. And uh, the second would be the, uh, as I mentioned before also, being persistent. That's the uh, most important uh, factor for any entrepreneur, uh, any any successful person you see. Because sticking, realizing after, even after facing a major failure, sticking to your business and believing in what you uh, initially started with uh, is very important.